Imagine Ebrahim Patel, Lamini Zuma, to start publishing in the government gazette when and when not companies, uh, uh, the restaurants, uh, the public sphere, who and when some people should and shouldn't be excluded from that. It's, it's, it's completely unacceptable. The South African government is considering imposing a vaccine mandate on all citizens. But one business group, Sakhalicha, is opposed to this. They have sent a letter to the presidency outlining their objections. CEO of Sakhalicha, Pete LaRue, joins me today. So, Pete, what were the details of your letter that you sent to the president last week? Yes, together with several other business organizations, we sent a letter to the presidency telling him that, well, uh, first of all, we we now hear about this consultation process about mandatory vaccination. This goes against what you've assured us all the time. But uh, so just to register that we are still opposed to this um, and that we are also opposed to what comes with it, which is the monitored society and you, uh, compelling businesses to uh, enforce this new bureaucracy of micromanagement. Um, now, we are in favor of voluntary vaccination campaigns, and we also told the president that uh, the, there's, uh, if you purport to uh, indicate that there's a broad consultation process and you have, that you have the support for business, um, that is incorrect. There's great disagreement among businesses, and in fact, it's uh, some, a minority of businesses, uh, some big companies have indicated that they wish to, in some or other way, force their employees to be vaccinated, but um, even there, there are exceptions. Um, so, yes, a few companies have done so, but it's incorrect to say that business supports mandatory vaccination, social monitoring, um, and the enforcement of the private sector in that. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. So, Pete, many of these actions come in the wake of the Omicron variant, uh, which uh, seems to be a lot more transmissible. It's still unclear the severity of this variant. Uh, but early indications of the, is that it's not as severe. Do you think that this is driving a lot of this uh, kind of quite severe knee-jerk reaction from governments and other parties? Yes, the Omicron variant is probably driving some of the knee-jerk reaction as well as some statistical artifacts. For example, uh, much of the increased case numbers we've seen recently or last week, end of November, was just uh, old numbers that got fed into the data with, uh, without um, date uh, correction. Um, and then the Omicron uh, panic, which is, um, I mean, even many South African scientists and doctors are saying, look, you know very little about this thing. It seems mild at this stage. Um, please just relax. Don't put in irrational international travel bans on the basis of uh, this bad information uh, or this tentative information. Now, in the same way, the only reason we're having this mandatory vaccination debate, except that few people or you know, select groups have been pushing for this, uh, it's been simmering a while, is it came to the front on the back of the Omicron panic. And uh, at this stage, the calm and rational thing to do, the responsible thing, is to just take a step back, uh, keep up the voluntary vaccination campaigns, um, look at, uh, at uh, previous infection rates and uh, just try and understand how uh, recovery and previous immunization and boosters, et cetera, reflect on the Omicron situation. Uh, let's just calm down uh, and stop on the back of the Omicron panic, which we have called irrational when international governments banned in the South African travelers. Uh, let's, um, uh, you know, in the same way, caution against rash uh, action right now. Many of the advocates of the forced vaccinations are saying that, well, we need to take a precautionary approach. Uh, we don't yet know uh, how bad uh, this new variant is going to be. Uh, so we must just impose this at a very small cost, sensibly, uh, to citizens. Um, I'm very skeptical of that argument. Uh, but why is Sakhalicha taking this stand? Why are you drawing this, this line in the sand? Well, we're not interested in discussing the merits of uh, vaccines. There are plenty of very capable people who speak from uh, proper authority on the merits of vaccines and boosters, etc. But what we are uh, interested in, what we are, what is our responsibility, is to look at social policy and a flourishing society and the economy that needs to support this. Um, and uh, you know, two years ago, before uh, all this, this whole COVID situation came up, um, it was unthinkable that uh, free countries could uh, implement social credit systems, a constant monitoring, enlisting, uh, enlisting against their will, the private sector to enforce government, uh, you know, dictate whatever's published next in the government gazette. 
And here we are, two years down the line, and we're considering giving this tool to Minister Ibrahim Patel, uh, who banned flip-flops and short-sleeved shirts, and uh, Damini Zuma, who banned warm chicken or cold chicken, I don't, I don't even recall. Um, now, that's why Sarklich has opposed to this, because the monitored society is the society that we should oppose. Um, it is bad for the flourishment of people. Um, it is not good for the economy. Um, and it is something that once we let it happen, it will be very, very hard to remove. Imagine Ebrahim Patel, Lamini Zuma, to start publishing in the government gazette when and when not companies, uh, uh, the restaurants, uh, the public sphere, who and when some people should and shouldn't be excluded from that. It's, it's, it's completely unacceptable. And one of the dangers, in my view, is that this might actually have the opposite effect, that government mandating the vaccine to be taken would actually create a response, a pushback from citizens who might question the motives of the government or might just outright refuse, which could create other secondary conflicts in society. Do you think that that is a danger? Quite possible. We're, we're witnessing the politicization of science um, and uh, something that is politicized, a uh, scientific inquiry. It's, a, it's an inquiry after the truth, uh, the, the essence of, a, of something, uh, understanding proper relations between things. That is a scientific inquiry. And now when we move to the level of policy and we select uh, for a very specific subset to scientific views and we make that uh, religious truth, um, then um, we're, 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 we're taking out the self-corrective mechanisms in society. When we enforce one particular view, um, uh, you know, a politician's view of what science is isn't what science is, but ultimately they're going to pick something. And we've seen the Coronavirus Command Council and the medical advisors and Lamini Zuma and others firing the scientific advisors they don't like, getting the scientific advisors they do like on board. Uh, we see from very respectable people, many, if not the majority of them, you know, uh, many, many doctors, academic and practitioners, medical people are in favor of, of vaccinations. But what does that mean? The world isn't binary. Does that mean a booster every three months? Does that mean compulsory vaccination? Does that mean taking into account antibodies, etc.? So what we're now allowing is for government to politicize science. And yes, definitely uh, among people, among very good rational people, that will elicit a, 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 do, a, a, a response of hesitation. So, Pete, in your letter, did you give any indication as to whether Sarkalicha would be pursuing legal action against the state should they impose these mandatory vaccinations? No, we did not give an indication. We insisted on being part of a consultation process and also on the details of such any such consultation process about mandatory vaccinations that uh, government would consider. And we'll have to see what uh, comes back from that. Uh, Sarkalicha takes the conditions for a flourishing society seriously. Um, if litigation is required, that is it. But uh, quite likely, this is not something that can be solved at the level of litigation. It is something that has to be solved the level of uh, society saying no. Um, and uh, so I think that's, David, where um, the public discussion right now needs to stay open and not get shut down by um, a very select uh, idea of one solution for the whole of the country. Um, and possibly, you know, where does this take us? Will countries start to impose mandatory vaccinations in other countries? Because if it's the morally right thing to do in your country, why not tell the neighboring country it has to be done too? Um, uh, it can lead to not only conflict, you know, breaking up families, breaking up companies, uh, breaking up societies, it can lead to breakups between countries. We, we must not allow mandatory vaccination, big size solutions um, to problems that need a decentralized approach in the way that is now proposed. Pete LaRue, thank you very much for joining me on the CRA channel. Let's hand over to you, our viewers. What do you think of the government's decision to impose a vaccine mandate? What will be the effect of this? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.